There's an editing trick that can make your landscapes pop in Photoshop, and in this video I'll show you why making your photos look like this is the secret ingredient. First, it's important to understand one of the most critical things in making a landscape photo pop, and it's to do with how you treat light, colour, and contrast when you're editing, because it's natural to kind of think that by enhancing all these things all over your image, you'll end up with a photo that pops more. Enhancing light in the shadows so you can see all the details, making all the colors super saturated, darkening skies to bring out the sunrise and sunset colors. Well, this is what I used to do when I first started editing landscapes years ago. But the thing is, all you get when you use that approach is a flat result. And what I later learned is that creating images that really pop with a real sense of depth takes a more refined approach to editing. Take this photo, for example. It's an older one of mine from years ago where I tried to bring out all the colors and detail all over the whole shot, thinking that's what would make it pop. But look what happens when I convert the photo into this weird looking black and white thing where all the light values have been compressed into just four shades. So hold that thought. And now let me show you the four shades view of a more recent edit of the same photo where I actually followed the rules of light and contrast more closely. Now comparing the two, which original edit looks like it's going to pop more based on this? Hopefully you said the new one. So why is this? Well, in the first edit, all the greys are closer together in lightness. Things that should be bright in the original photo are the same lightness or shades of grey as things that should be darker. And this black and white view is so important because it helps you visualise these problems and correct them when it might be otherwise tricky to spot them in the full colour version. Now back to the newer edit, and there's a higher level of contrast between elements. Darks are darker, lights are lighter, things in the distance are lighter, which is one of the key rules of depth that I'm about to go into. And here's the actual edit, which to me at least looks a lot more natural and dynamic than this first one. Here's how you can create this special black and white view of your image each time. It's quite a few steps, so I've included an action that you can download below the video for free. But let me just show you how to do it manually first. The first thing you need to do is duplicate your image by going to image duplicate. And the reason for that is that we need to convert the image to 8-bit because the next step doesn't work in 16-bit, which is what most of us are editing our images in. So let's now flatten our image. It doesn't matter that we're losing edits here because this is just a temporary duplicate file. Now we're going to go image mode 8 bits. So next we're going to desaturate the image. So we'll go to image adjustments and desaturate. And then we can convert the background into a smart object in case you want to change any of the next settings that we're going to make. And from here we'll go filter, filter gallery. And this is the thing that will only work in 8-bit. So normally this will be grayed out because you're going to be probably using 16-bit. So let's go filter gallery and we're going to choose the cutout filter which is under the artistic drop down at the top and the settings we're going to use are number of levels 4, edge simplicity 7, edge fidelity 2. You can choose different levels there that's just what I found to be the best for what we're trying to do here so we'll click OK and hey presto that is our values check image complete. Now like I said this is quite a few steps to do every time and to remember so if you prefer to do it all in one click then you can just download the action that I've created for you for free from the link in the description and pinned comment. So once downloaded, all you need to do is run it at any stage of an edit and the action creates the black and white values check image for you in a separate tab like this. Now you have this tool to visualize the pop factor in your photos. Now let me show you one of the most effective ways to make the important elements in your photos pop. So let me just put this on the screen for a second and ask you, where's Wally? So you know, first question is where are you supposed to start looking? And how easy is it to know where to look? Let's start over, but this time I'm going to not so subtly alter the light in the scene. Now this time, how fast did you know where to look? Pretty fast, right? Now the same idea works with your photos too, to help guide a viewer through a scene and to add an extra level of depth. But you can't do this as blatantly in your photos as what I just did with Where's Wally because it will just look like you're shining a torch on the thing. Instead, you need to do it in a much more hidden way. So let me show you one of these methods now. Now, the key to guiding your viewer through an image with light and shadow in editing, like we just did with Wally, is knowing what things to lighten and by how much, as well as what to darken or to leave the same. For example, it's easy to get caught in that trap of bringing out all the detail in the shadows and brightening them too much. But if you do that, like I said before, everything stands out. And when everything stands out, nothing stands out and your image becomes flat. So pick the key areas that you want the viewer to look at and subtly lighten them. Give them a touch more contrast, 
darken other areas or leave already dark areas dark if they're not the key focus of the scene. One way that you can do this is with a series of curves adjustment layers that increase or decrease brightness and contrast. And then you can brush into each one's layer mask to reveal them just in the areas that you want that adjustment to affect. So using brightness and contrast is one way to guide your viewer's eye through an image. Another great tool for making things stand out is saturation. But the thing is, you don't really want your editing to look overcooked. So just with light and contrast, you really only need to enhance saturation in just the right places. So first, let me show you how you can do it. And then I'll show you how to know where and by how much to do it. There are two easy ways to selectively enhance saturation in different areas of your photo. And one is to use layer masks to reveal a hue saturation adjustment layer in the parts of your photo that need it. And the other is to saturate or desaturate individual colors by different amounts. Again, with the hue saturation adjustment layer, selecting a color from this drop down box, you can increase or decrease that color separately from the others. So that's how to selectively increase or decrease saturation to make different parts of your image stand out more. The question now becomes, what parts of the image should you be doing this to? Because if you're selectively enhancing light and shadow to draw attention to the important areas and you're enhancing saturation more in some areas than others and your landscapes are still turning out flat, then it's because you're not using light and saturation together in the way that I'm about to show you in this next video.